This is the visit training module on trowel identification. This module will remind you how to identify trowels, what to do when trowels are present, and how to use them in the forecast process to understand what's going on. I'm Scott Lindstrom from SIMS. This module will teach you a little bit about the history of trowels. You'll learn, you'll learn about how they form and how they may interact with other extratropical cyclone structures. And more importantly, you'll learn how to identify trowels in satellite imagery. Trowels are most often a feature associated with occluded extratropical cyclones. When they're present, precipitation can be significantly increased or prolonged. Trowel is a clumsy acronym that was coined by the Canadian Penner in the mid-1950s, Trough of Warm Air Aloft. This followed almost two decades of observations that showed sometimes there was tropical air, very warm and moist air, extending into the cold air from the triple point of an occlusion. But after the early 60s, this nomenclature fell away from the literature, and it really wasn't referenced again until the late 90s, when John Martin at the University of Wisconsin-Madison reapplied this concept to some observations of extratropical cyclones that he had. So now we talk about trowels as regions of warm air aloft. Trowels are a useful conceptual model and join other useful conceptual models that you might have for extratropical cyclones, such as the Norwegian cyclone model or warm and cold conveyor belts. Like those two others, trowels are useful because it helps you identify or determine what the air streams are in a cyclone at a glance, and that helps you give guidance to where rain and snow might be occurring. This figure is from Toby Carlson's 1980 paper on mid-latitude storm structure, and it shows the warm conveyor belt in dark gray and the cold conveyor belt in light gray. Of particular importance is this limiting streamline. The theory suggests that when air is in the, in the warm conveyor belt, it cannot move west of this limiting streamline. That is, it cannot wrap around the surface low pressure system. When a trowel airstream is present, however, shown by this blue arrow, warm, moist air that is in the warm conveyor belt can wrap around the surface low pressure system and the cold air. This is a, an important source of moisture. This schematic figure shows the trowel. It starts at the surface with the triple point of the warm, cold, and occluded fronts, and then it gradually ascends into the cold air, as shown by the vertical length of these uh, black lines. The blue and the red features here are isentropic surfaces. Notice you have a canyon here on this isentropic surface, and these isentropic surfaces are steeply sloping. If you have any kind of frontal forcing on there, you will have strong upward motion along the isentropic surfaces, and that upward motion will have access to the warm and moist air within the trowel. Precipitation can result. This figure shows airstream ribbons around an occluded low pressure system. The ribbons are color coded such that the warmer colors, the reds, are lower in the atmosphere and the cooler colors, uh, cyans and blues, are higher in the atmosphere. You can identify a couple of different air streams in here. For example, this one starts fairly low in the atmosphere, then rises quickly and turns anticyclonically downstream, just as you would expect from a warm conveyor belt. A different air stream generated at the same point from a little bit farther down in the atmosphere also starts in the warm sector but then that airstream ribbon wraps cyclonically around the low pressure system. This is just what you'd expect from a trowel airstream. Here's the same view, but rotated. You can get a little, a little better perspective on the motion of the trowel airstream ribbon compared to the motion of the airstream ribbon that's in the warm conveyor belt. A trowel is characterized by an S-shape to either isotherms, isentropes, thickness contours, some kind of thermodynamic variable. If you identify a region of a trowel, pay special attention to any forcing mechanisms upstream of that trowel and ask yourself 
How might they interact because this forcing mechanism is approaching a region of lower stability and enhanced moisture? So you might expect a big response as that forcing mechanism approaches the trowel. So be alert to the possibility of development. You can use the volume browser to look at QS convergence. Where you have QS converging, the canyon on the isentropic surface is going to develop. Let's look at the effects of a trowel that was present in an early season snowstorm that affected in North Dakota. You see that it was a fairly prolific snow producer with totals between two and three feet. This is an animation of GOES-16 mid-level water vapor, that's channel 9, 6.95 micrometers, and the contours on it are of the 295 Kelvin equivalent potential temperature from the wrap. I want to draw your attention to the S-shape to those features, so you have a, a warm region wrapping around the surface low pressure system. So, for example, you have a nice S-shape to this 300 Kelvin um, isentrope. If you know that a trial is present, then you're going to be able to see that there is a region just to the west of the trial where you have very strong ascent on this sloping isentropic surface, and you're going to have any forcing mechanism that, that is there have a strong response, and you might expect heavy precipitation. And the region I circled is where the two to three feet of snow fell. So a well-forecast trowel and being alert to that, to that trowel's presence enables you to anticipate the presence of heavy precipitation, and that is indeed what happened with this particular storm. To better visualize this trowel, we're going to look at this cross-section from B to B prime in the storm. Here is that cross section. Note that Roseau, Minnesota and Langdon, North Dakota are shown here. The border's kind of halfway in between there. A couple of things to note we have some convective instability um, over the Red River Valley of the north. Note the very strong vertical motion in the region of the trowel that's producing the band of heavy precipitation that shows up very clearly on this particular cross section. Now let's look at a warm season example. This is accumulated precipitation on the 20th of August in 2018 associated with a trowel over the Midwest. WPC guidance on this day actually did mention the trowel. So you would have been alert to its presence. If you know a trowel is there, you know that there is low level moisture and perhaps reduced stability and slanting isentropic surfaces that might allow for frontogenesis to occur. And if you see a forcing mechanism approaching in the form, for example, of an occluded front, all these things should inform your near casting to take into consideration heavy rain and perhaps flash flooding. That's why you want to know whether a trowel is present. This image, this still image, shows the low-level GO-16 band 10 7.34 micrometer water vapor imagery and on top of that is a 330 Kelvin wet bulb. And it's asking you, where is the trowel? And I hope you see the nice S shape to these uh, isentropic surfaces. I'm kind of trying to draw something right here. And here's the trowel right over northern Iowa. So you know this trowel is present. That might be where you focus your attention on any particular forcing mechanism coming because at the sides of the trowels where you have the steeply sloping isentropic surfaces, that's where you're most likely to get any kind of front genetic response and heavy precipitation. Six hours later, where is the trowel? Right through here. And we have steeply sloping isentropic surfaces just to its south. This is the mid-level water vapor imagery, 6.9 micrometers from halfway between those earlier two images. So I showed you 12 and 18Z, now we're showing 15Z, and I'm showing you where the trowel is. That's where you want to focus your attention where enhanced precipitation might occur. So this is the animation of the 6.95 micrometer from about 13Z on the 20th to maybe 130Z on the 21st. Now we know where the trowel is. It's in this region here. Notice how the strong convection is occurring there. 
as impulses rotate around this upper level low pressure system and interact with the trowel. If you know where the trowel sits, you know where to focus your attention on any small impulses that might grow and produce precipitation. The low level moisture that's in the trowel has a signal in this all sky total precipitable water product. The URL where you can view this product is in the student guide. The animation of the all sky total precipitable water product shows how the trowel is drawing moisture from the warm sector and wrapping it around that low pressure system that's over Iowa and Missouri. Very heavy rains that fell over Wisconsin with totals up over 14 inches in western Dane County fell on the northern edge of that trowel. Here are some summary thoughts on trowels. As noted in these examples, they're mostly associated with occluded systems, although you can rarely get them within a system that is not occluded. They're an important mechanism to transport warm and moist air into the cold sector of a system and maybe give heavier precipitation there than you might otherwise have. It can set the stage for strong frontogenetic forcing because the sides of a trowel, which is a canyon on an isentropic surface, can be very steeply sloping. So if you know where a trowel is and you see a forcing mechanism approaching that trowel, you need to be alert to the possibility that heavy precipitation might result. This is the end of the training on trowel. Thank you for listening.